Fellow believers, greetings in the holy name of Christ Jesus. I'm Bill King and I welcome you to Bill King Ministries. And thank you for joining me and allowing me to share God's word with you. Today is a glorious day throughout Christendom. Easter Sunday, the day we commemorate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's resurrection. And I pray and bless that God blesses this message and that it may bring forth the revelation of the Holy Spirit in the hearts of all who share in these words. Amen. My message today is entitled, Death Could Not Hold Him. Before we begin, let me say what an honor and a privilege it is to be able to return to this, my original ministry, as I was locked out of this account for two and a half years by Meta due to an insane two-step security violation process. Today is the very first live video sermon I will provide on this ministry with hundreds more to follow, God be willing, as I have been doing for the past two and a half years on the ministry account Meta forced me to create. Now, I find it wonderful and ironic even to present this first live video sermon on the most glorious of days in all of Christendom, Easter Sunday, when we gather together as one in the body of Christ to commemorate Christ's triumphant, triumphant defeat over death, his resurrection. And I am so happy to be here with you and sharing God's word. And also, I call upon each of you to join me in prayer for several dear friends of mine. The first one being Mr. Joe Phillips, a lifelong friend of mine back in my home state of Florida. Joe has been, as has within the past year, suffered a series of strokes associated with extremely high blood pressure, extremely high blood pressure off the mark. And he has just been released from an incredibly long six-month hospitalization. Six months. My goodness. He is recovering in his brother's home down in my home state, in my home city, Niceville, Florida. And he has a long road ahead of him. And he is also diabetic and undergoes kidney dialysis three times per week. The next person that I would like for you to keep in your prayers, if you would, please. Sister Edie Shepherd, another lifelong friend of mine from back in my home state of Florida in Niceville. Sister Edie has been battling with cancer now for several years and has recently, within the past year, suffered and survived a heart attack. Her health is a constant concern, both for her and her family. And next, Mr. Ricky McGinnis, Ricky McGinnis, a dear and trusted brother in Christ. Ricky suffered several strokes within the past few years, and most recently, just last week, suffered a fall while mowing his yard. Now, I assisted the paramedics in caring for Ricky, as he is my next-door neighbor. He's approximately 70, 70 years old in poor health, very frail and feeble. Now, while in the emergency room for his fall, lo and behold, he suffered a major heart attack right there on the table, and he will undergo open-heart surgery tomorrow morning, Monday morning, in Atrium Heart Hospital in Macon, Georgia, which is about 10, 10 minutes drive north of me on I-75. And that was where I recently was hospitalized and cared for last week when I suffered and endured my fourth heart attack. And last but not least, my dear sister, Betty King Schneckenberger, who underwent open heart surgery slightly over a year ago and is still not fully recovered. Now, I humbly ask that you help me keep those individuals in our thoughts and prayers 
as well as any and all we are aware of and care for who are suffering through various health crises. And I thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. Bless you. Amen. As I said, the title of my message this morning is Death Could Not Hold Him. And my references are John 19, 38 through 42, Matthew 28, 1 through 18, John 20, 11 through 18, as well as Numbers 6, 24 through 26, as contained in the New King James Version of the Holy Bible and listed in order of precedence in their use in this message if you have your Bibles along with you and you'd like to follow along at the appropriate times. Amen. Before we get started, excuse me. Now, let's get to our Easter message. We know from the Gospels, that is, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels, that Jesus gave up his spirit. He gave it up. And that's important. He gave it up. He just didn't die on the cross. He gave up his spirit about the ninth hour of his crucifixion. And we also know that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, Nicodemus, a Pharisee follower of Jesus, after pleading with Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate, the Roman prefect or governor of Judea, who was responsible for ordering Christ's flogging and crucifixion, after they pled with him, they were granted permission to remove Christ's body from the cross so as to properly care for it, as was their Jewish custom. And the Holy Bible says, and I'm going to quote John 19, 38 through 42. This is Apostle John 19, 38 through 42, and I quote, After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus and Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night. Remember that passage about, Lord, how is it possible that a, a person, a believer, be reborn? Can they go back into their mother's womb? You remember that? That was Nicodemus. So, they, so Nicodemus joined him and they, they came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloe, aloes, about a hundred pounds. Now that was spices. And then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in stripes of linen with spices, as was the custom of the Jews to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had been laid. As a matter of fact, it belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. It was destined to be Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. But he, he gave it, he gave it up. So there they laid Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day. For the tomb was nearby. And that was John 19, 38 through 42. How you doing, Gene? Glad you could join with me. I love you. Each of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, provide a slightly differing narrative concerning what transpired next. Slightly different. But taking all into account, one thing is quite certain. The borrowed tomb was found to be empty on the third day. Death could not hold him. And I'm going to quote Matthew 28, 1 through 8, the Gospel of Matthew 28, 1 through 8. And I quote, Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, there were several Marys, came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. 
His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Now that doesn't mean they died. That means they passed out. Out of fear. Can you imagine? But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. And that was Matthew 28, 1 through 8. Now that's according to Matthew, the apostle Matthew. Now let's turn to the gospel of John, the apostle, apostle John. And we're going to continue and I'm going to quote John 20, 11 through 18. You're going to see a little deviation here, but the same thing. Quote, but Mary stood, and this is Mary Magdalene, very important figure in Christ's ministry, not given credit. She was a disciple. And as far as I'm concerned, and I've preached several times, she was the first minister of the gospel, not the men, Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting. See how it differs between Matthew and here? She saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And then they said to her, that's the angels, then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, this is Mary, she said to, him, to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, and this is wonderful. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. And did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, Mary Magdalene. Supposing him to be the gardener, <laughs> said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. She loved him. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him, Rabbani, which is to say teacher. He was a prophet. He was a teacher. Rabbani. And Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples, that's what I was saying, she was the first minister, the spreader of the good news. Mary Magdalene came to the disciples and said that she had seen the Lord. And that he had spoken these things to her. Praise the Lord. And that was John 20, 11 through 18. Jesus of Nazareth. The son of God. Risen from the borrowed tomb on the third day. Just as he prophesied to the Pharisees and Jews present. The day he ran the money changers and merchants out of the holy temple. And yet they did not comprehend what he was saying. And I will quote John 2, 18 through 21. John 2, 18 through 21. This is when that happened. Quote, so the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us since you do these things? And Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple and in three days, I will raise it up. And then the Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, 
And will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Hallelujah. And that was John 2, 18 through 21. Excuse me. The resurrection of Jesus Christ in association with his ascension to heaven is the foundation on which our faith stands firm. For by such we are assured death cannot hold us. Christ gave his life as propitiation unto God the Father for the sins of all humanity and for his unselfish act of love. We are forevermore grateful and blessed. Now there are those who say we are foolish to believe in such as it is only a mythical fairy tale. That no mortal man can rise from the dead and live again. But Jesus of Nazareth was no ordinary mortal man. Though born of an earthly mother, he was miraculously conceived through the Holy Spirit as pronounced to his earthly mother, Mary, the Virgin Mary, and his earthly father, his stepfather, Joseph of Nazareth. He was pronounced by God's messenger, Archangel Gabriel. And that birth is what's referred to as the Immaculate Conception. Carrying on. There are those who say we are foolish to believe in something which we cannot see, touch, or feel. That which isn't tangible. That God is merely a figment of our imagination. And how wrong they are in their manner of thinking. For just as Apostle Paul said. Their minds are corrupt. Their minds are corrupt. They do not know what they speak. As we bear witness to God in all his magnificent glory. Listen to me folks. Each time we cast our eyes Upon a beautiful sunrise, there's God. And each time we touch the warm skin of someone we love, there is God. And when we behold the longing cry of a newborn child, amen. I just said to Apostle Paul, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And Paul tells us that in 2 Corinthians 5, through seven, and such is the way of our faith, and such is the way of all believers in Christ Jesus. And so it is my prayer this Easter Sunday morning, my humble prayer, that God removes the blinders from the hearts of all who believe not so they too may come to know the true meaning of life. For it is not the pursuit of worldly pleasures and earthly gains, but to come to know, experience, and appreciate the peace, joy, and tranquility found only through faith in the Son of God, Christ Jesus, by God's grace. Now, as we draw near the conclusion of this service this morning, and this is very important, hear me out. If there is anyone with us or viewing this message at a later date and time who has yet to turn their life over to God, right now is the time. If you so desire to do so, well, it would be my honor and privilege to lead you to the cross. So please bow your heads and repent, re repeat this sinner's prayer with this little old humble preacher. Father God in heaven, I come to you a sinner seeking forgiveness and salvation, openly proclaiming you as almighty God and Christ Jesus as the sole means 
of redemption through faith and His divine power and authority as per your grace. Forgive me my indiscretions and accept me into your heavenly kingdom upon my earthly demise. And in this I pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer with me in earnest repentance, well, then Christ Jesus has forgiven you of all your sins and drawn you in as a child of his Father. And I welcome you into the family. Now, go forth and seek a local minister or priest, because I can't do this for you, obviously, Seek a local minister or a priest for the purpose of water baptism. Water baptism in accordance with Jesus' instructions. And endeavor to embrace the teachings of this message this morning. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And lastly, and we're almost through, and I can't, I can't believe time has flown by so fast. I, 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 I can't, I, I want to keep preaching forever. <laughs> I know you've got things to do. But lastly, I ask that you kindly remember and contribute, if possible, to this ministry. So I may continue to spread the gospel throughout the world and bring humanitarian relief where it is needed. And God will surely bless you for doing so. And also, very important, I'd like to tell you or remind you that I am currently accepting applications for associate pastor positions within Bill King Ministries. We've grown so large, I need help. If you are duly, very important, if you are duly qualified to pastor a church, you have the training, the experience, and the knowledge to do so, then please submit your application to me via my email, which is billkingministries at gmail.com, as per my instructions on the message I posted concerning this just a few days ago. And the cutoff for submitting an application is April 30th. I review every one of them personally, and I will respond to you, and I should have all the applications reviewed no later than May the 15th and makes my decisions on who I am accepting to be my associate pastors. And bless you. Now, in conclusion, if you enjoyed this message and you agree with my teachings, I welcome you to join me and your fellow Christian brothers and sisters each Sunday morning at 9.30, between 9.30 and 10, 10.15, give or take a few minutes for live online worship service right here at Bill King Ministries on Facebook.com. And this is my original ministry page, hallelujah, back to it after two and a half years. And please, bring along some family and friends with you so that we might share in Christian fellowship, camaraderie, Christian fellowship, and worship as one in the body of Christ. For we are God's church. The believers are God's church. The church is not the building, the facility where people go to worship. That's a building and a facility. We are the believers are God's church. Highly important. Never forget that. And now, please join me in our closing prayer. And as always... Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. You go in peace. Heavenly Father, no greater gift has ever been bestowed in the annals of time than that of your giving your only begotten Son, Christ Jesus, as the living sacrifice for the sins of man. And how we praise you for your compassion, love, mercy, and grace, for we are not worthy of such. We give honor and glory unto you on this, the holiest of days, Resurrection Sunday. And this is our prayer unto you in the precious name of Christ. Amen.
Thank you.